Okay guys, um, so hello guys, going to a new video. So for this video, I'm going to do, I'm going to talk about SAT tips and tricks and how to get 1500 and above on SAT. So I'm just going to kind of like a conversation with you guys, to be honest, I haven't really prepared for this video as I like to like just speak my mind, speak what's on my mind for these type of videos. So uh, I hope you guys enjoyed the video. If you haven't already, make sure to subscribe. If you enjoyed the video, make sure to like the video. And if you have any questions, just put in the comment description. Or if you want to hear on my Instagram, just underscore Dylan Ferreira underscore. If any question you have, I don't mind answering. If I have time, I'll see the message and I'll answer it respectively. But other than that, um, hope you guys enjoyed the video. And yeah, let's get started. Okay, so numero uno. So the first tip that I suggest, guys, I've taken an SAT three times, one in March, May, and October. And trust me, I know what I went wrong and I know how to get a good score. If you want to get 1500 and above, follow these tips and you're guaranteed to get 1500 and above. The first tip is practice. When I mean it, guys, you need to practice for the SAT. Okay, there are some students that have never done any SAT practice in their life, they get a perfect score, they get 1500, but that is not you. If you're watching that video, it's because you're not that student. So if you guys really want to improve, practice 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 when i mean practice i mean like three to five hours a day maybe excluding weekends because weekends is time to rest to be honest but practice 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 and when i mean practice i mean actually doing questions like challenging questions and like doing stuff that you're not good at like a lot of mistakes a lot of test takers make a lot of mistakes that i made myself is when i was practicing for my sat I tend to like only focus on stuff I'm really good at. So I'll do like, I'm very good at math to be honest. I'm, I don't sound all egocentric or whatever, but like, I'm very good at math. So I tend to do a lot of math questions so I can feel good. I'd be like, okay, I done a lot of work. I feel confident, that's good. But that's the worst thing. Cause when you do that, you're just making yourself overconfident. Like you're not really helping yourself. Cause if you're doing stuff you're really good at, you're not really learning. So what I suggest you doing, take a practice test and take a practice test on pen and paper or pencil on paper print out the sheets like 60 pages i know it's a lot of paper but trust me the real sat paper the real sat test i mean is on paper so you want to like replicate the whole scenario the whole like test scenario so if you can wake up on a saturday morning specifically 8 a.m put paper on your desk get a pencil and go on youtube type in like sat mock uh, proctor whatever it's called three to four hour exam and take it and see where you went wrong and see where you went well obviously if you know you got well you don't really have to go over it maybe check again to see or oh, maybe because to be honest it is a multiple choice question so you could have got it by guessing so still make sure you check the question you got right but make sure you definitely read over the question you got wrong so good question go wrong there's probably people on youtube explaining each question of all the practices so go on youtube see people reviewing it go on Khan Academy, I highly recommend it, it's for free, it's online, you don't need to pay for anything. Go on Khan Academy, type the topic you're looking for that you need help in, review it, do some practice questions, improve, take another test again. That's how you're going to improve. So uh, let me simplify that in like two sentences. So what you guys need to do is print out the SAT with paper. Try to wake up in the morning because the SAT test tends to be in, my test was around 8 something a.m. on a Saturday morning. So like you have to kind of get used to that scenario. It's not it's not an evening test like 12 in the afternoon or 2 in the afternoon. So it is annoying. It's straight in the morning, Saturday morning. So try to replicate that. Wake up in the Saturday morning, get pencil and paper and start the test under timed condition. Yeah, that's my numero uno tip. Practice, practice, practice on the things you need to work on. Not the things you're good at, the things you need to work on. So tip number two. Guys, this tip is so important and a lot of people like this so much. So if you're watching this video and you're sitting the, the SAT test in December, first of all, I'm going to wish you good luck. I want to like, kind of congratulate you for like, being like confident to take the test. It is a huge move. And don't get me wrong, it is a hard test, but you guys got this. But other than that, guys, consistency is what you need. A lot of people, what they tend to do is they procrastinate to like the last two weeks, the last week, and they just try to cram everything in the last week. That is not going to help. Trust me. If you get yourself in that situation where you have to cram everything in the last week, don't try to cram. Just try to focus on things, like small, tiny things, and do lots of practice to practice on those type of questions. Okay, that's going to help you so much more. Because what you do when you cram yourself, which is what I do on myself, 
I take lots of practice. I take like three practice tests. Sorry, I took three practice tests in a week, and I was getting very low scores because I was so stressed of like, oh my days, like I'm not improving. And like when I came to the road test, I was so stressed. I had a lack of confidence that I really did not perform at my best or my peak. So what you want to do is consistency. If you know you're going to take this test or you already booked it, make sure you practice at least three months before. I'm not saying you have to, but it's recommended at least three to six months before. Practice every day, like consistency. Three to five hours, not three to five hours, you can do like one to two hours and do like a practice test on the weekend. But practice every day. Don't practice for a whole two weeks, every five hours a day, they take a whole month break. That is not going to work. You need to practice every day three to five hours or one to two hours or one to five hours, whatever, just practice at least an hour to run us a day. Maybe take a break on the weekends or take a practice test, a three hour, three to four hour practice test on a Saturday morning and keep doing that schedule for the rest of the time until you sit the exam. And if it's like two days before the exam, just don't do anything. Your brain needs to rest. If you do so much before the exam, you start to forget things, you start to become stressed. It's not helping you. So another tip, if it's three to two, one day away from the exam, take a break. Go out, go to the city, go to the shop, go shopping, do whatever. Just take your mind off the test and relax. Get some sleep. You need your eight hours of sleep a day. So guys, that's my tip. My numerous, so that's my second tip. Make sure you're consistent. And I'm going to repeat this again. If you're in that situation where you have like one week, two weeks left for your exam, Focus on tiny stuff. Don't try and cram everything in. That's not going to help. Just focus on the small things. But yeah, that's everything for my second tip. Let's go on to the third. Okay, guys. For my third tip, you need a goal. To be honest, when you look at an SAT, and it has to be a realistic goal. So, for example, if you get like an 1100 or 1200 or 1300 on your practice test, and you still want to get like a 1600 or 1550, that's not really realistic. Especially if you have like two to one week before your actual test. Like, trust me guys, when you set realistic goals, you're going to work towards those goals and you will achieve those goals if you put on the work. So my third tip is set up a goal. Look at the colleges you're applying to. For example, if you're applying to super extreme, extra competitive university like Harvard, Washington University, MIT, Stanford, Duke, Ivy League, etc. You put on to aim for like a 1450, even 1450 is a quite iffy, but like 14... I would say 1480 to be honest, 1450, 1480 and above, that should be your goal if you aim for these type of colleges. If you're aiming for like more T20, T30 universities, like, give me a good example, uh, I'm not too sure to be honest, um, UV, actually, UVA is quite good, I'm not too sure, but like, you can go in like US rankings, T20, T30 schools, then you probably should aim like a 13, maybe like 1250, like a 1400, a 1300 like the mid range is quite a good score for these type of schools. Like, look at your colleges, look at the scores you get in your practice test, and set a goal. And one good thing I like about Khan Academy, I will put a link in the description about Khan Academy. Khan Academy is so good, it's for free, it's online, it's beautiful, it's amazing. I super recommend it, literally zero cost. Like, if you want to get better than SAT, use Khan Academy, and you basically, you're basically set to, and if you put in the work, obviously. But as I was saying, set a reasonable goal. So, for example, one thing I like about SAT. Is like um if I get like a fourteen if I take like a you can link your for, sorry you can link your college board account to your Khan Academy account so for example if I took like a raw test in March and I got like a fourteen hundred the Khan Academy will read that data and will automatically put like the questions and or the topics I need to improve on in my Khan Academy like um account so I didn't do no work literally will read all the data be like okay you need to improve on these topics do these questions in time conditions or practice them with questions etc. So guys, make sure you do practice test. Can of can you literally automatically select the question you need to work on? That's the beats for can of can My third tip is set a realistic goal, strive for the goal. And that's my third tip to be honest. Okay guys, so my fourth tip, basically my last, my fourth tip, this is really important as well. Especially for the reading section, make sure you read a lot of books, a lot of articles. To be honest, I never done this, because this is kind of like very long term, like for example, you have like three months or less, it's not really going to work. But for some, if you're like in the ninth grade, your junior year, your senior, not senior, your junior year, your freshman, and maybe sophomore, then and you know you can take your SAT like in a few years and a few months coming, try to do this. It's hard. There are some days gonna be like, I'm too tired, I just can't be asked, and that's fine. 
But try to read like an article or like a go on New York Times or any magazine, read a newspaper article, read it and try to like look for the meaning, you know, get a book and try to write what this article means. Like try to find any words, try to summarize it. As I was saying, read an article that skill is so like literally analyzing what the reader's thoughts and everything is so important if you can master that you basically have the whole reading section on lock and i mean it literally the whole reading section is just about you analyzing the words what does this word mean in context what does this tone suggest about the paragraph or what does this author how does this author describe this character how does this setting set the story etc so if you can get an article a magazine article whatever read like a column a few pages to summarize it get a journal continuing from that strategy is so important guys SAT test is a standardized test it's not really an IQ test to be honest there are some strategies there are some techniques that you can use to help you improve like boost your school like like, increase, like exponentially I'm literally telling you guys facts so what i mean by this is for example in like the math section there's like some strategies called like um cross out the wrong answers or like if you have like an x not an x question but like an algebra subbing question you can like sub in all the answer choices and see which one is right or wrong so that's what i mean by strategy so like listen go on youtube i'm not saying all because i'm not gonna tell you all the strategies because there's so much strategies but go on youtube look up like reading strategies writing language strategies math long calc strategies Mass calculator strategies and practice one strategy. Look up, try to look at all the strategies and like try and pick one that is for you. Like, try and pick one that you feel like you can actually, like, you're the most confident in. Like, because some people are different to you, and like, we're all different. You see, make sure to, yeah, you have to like understand yourself and pick one that actually like matches you. I'm saying, pick a strategy and develop that strategy. Literally, use that strategy for every practice test because you want to try and replicate that into the real test because there's no point practicing for run strategy chess then you get to the road test and you just change up the whole thing like you just gotta flop now i'm sorry but you just gotta flop what you want to do is pick one strategy and just focus on a strategy for the rest of every for the rest of that the practice do practice tests using that strategy do questions using that strategy so when it comes to the road test you apply that strategy and the questions will be so much easier but other than that guys i think that's to be honest everything i might do a part two because i feel like i kind of rushed this video to be honest but that's basically everything my kind of final tips to be sending so my kind of final tips i would say is get a lot of sleep drink your water do you exercise like literally exercise helps you so much do exercise go to sleep early and when you wake up on the test day you're gonna feel nervous that literally when i woke up i was like damn like you know when you walk into the test you see everyone like from around the whole country like damn that's like, everyone feels so smart you get some imposter syndrome you feel like everyone's gonna get 1500 it's just so quiet it's a long test it's tiring but yeah and if you can you know eat a chocolate bar apparently a chocolate bar helps like dramatically on your test day but yeah um that's everything i can say to you i hope you guys enjoyed the video make sure to subscribe to like and comment your questions but other than that um uh, peace out